Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Siobhan and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at King's College London. And in today's video, we're going to talk about how to stay motivated in medical school. Now, medical school is a really long journey. Five to six years, to even longer for some people. Although this process can be really enjoyable, it can be really rewarding and it sets you up very well for a career ahead. It can be stressful at times, it can be difficult, and you will inevitably face challenges along the way. Therefore, it's very important to know how to tackle these challenges to avoid something we hear about a lot, and that's called burnout. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we do that, I want you to go check out my YouTube channel because over there I make videos about medical school and university. I make vlogs, day in the life videos, videos about med school and university, like I said, and then uh, videos about lifestyle and, you know, travel, all of that. Go check it out. If you find it interesting, if you think it's something you'd like, then uh, smash that subscribe button and join me for many more videos. But without any further ado, let's get into this one. So the first tip I'd give you to stay motivated, although it may sound cliched and you may question its importance, it's to take care of your overall mental health. Now, mental health is something that we learn about in medical school. We learn about its importance. We learn about how to, you know, manage it, to treat it, and its importance in terms of a patient's prognosis. But sometimes we end up ignoring our own. And what's important is being able to identify and address when you're not feeling so great, when you're probably not in the best position. And although you may not have a mental health disorder, it's still something that's important to address, take care of, and nip in the bud. If you ignore it, it can perpetuate and it can become something that really, really comes in your way in terms of doing well, succeeding, and staying motivated. So uh, address it on time and also take preventative measures. So that includes resting, relaxing, uh, doing things that you enjoy, uh, then obviously having open communication with friends, peers, family, and even your supervisors and seniors in medical school. They can be very, very helpful. I personally find when I'm not feeling so good about things, I get a lot less done and I do much worse than when I'm feeling happy and when I'm feeling motivated. The second tip is to focus on your overall goals. Like I said, medical school is a very long journey and it's very easy to lose sight at the end and to start questioning why you're doing what you're doing. So that's why it's important to keep your ultimate goal in mind and to put your current activities in perspective of what you're trying to achieve. When you have that goal in mind, each task, each assignment and each exam will feel like one step closer to that eventual goal. And very closely linked to this is the idea of exploring career opportunities. So I'm not expecting you or no one is expecting you to know what you want to do when you start medical school. But medical school is the time to explore the different opportunities available to get an idea of what you might be interested in. And if you do this, you'll have a more specific goal in mind and that will be even more motivating. My next tip is to stay connected to your peers. Everything is better and more fun when it's done with other people. Whether it's studying, whether it's going to the wards, whether it's just hanging out and, you know, unwinding after a long day at medical school. So reach out to people, stay connected to your friends, your colleagues, all of that. And uh, you'll have a much easier time because you'll get to share your troubles, you'll get to share this journey, share this experience with someone else who really understands what you're going through. And, you know, you'll know that you're not alone in this and you'll have a good time doing it. There is literally no disadvantage of being a social medical student. Then I'm going to tell you to take control of your time. Now, although you do have timetabled activities in medical school, you have places to be, things to do. Sometimes things don't work out exactly the way they are meant to. You may show up to a ward where there's not much for you to do. You may show up to a surgery that was cancelled. Or you may be listening to a lecture that is not really benefiting you or you're not really absorbing the information in it. And that's where it becomes important to take control of your time to evaluate the situation and see how you can improve it. For example, if you're on the ward and there's not much for you to do, think about what you can do to actually participate or where else you can go to find those opportunities. 
Similarly, if a surgery is cancelled, don't just hang around there, you know, uh, either leave to go to the library and study or try and find another sort of surgery to observe or to participate in. And if you have a lecture that's not proving so useful for you, find a different way to study the material that you need to study, whether it's through online resources, whether it's through reading a textbook, I, I don't know, whatever you find really works for you. Just don't waste that time because then you might as well just be doing nothing, sitting at home chilling, when you should actually be using that time to get something productive done and you're actually meant to be completing your activities for medical school. When you take control of your time and you have a productive day, you can really unwind when you get home completely guilt-free. And that brings me to the next tip, which is use your free time wisely and invest in high value, high entertainment activities. Sometimes you really do feel like doing nothing and we all have those days where you just feel like sitting back, relaxing, maybe scrolling on your phone or you know just doing nothing. But don't let that be an always thing. You want to invest in activities that are really rewarding and that give you something back. They're stimulating activities that will benefit you in some way or another. That includes going and trying new places with your friends, going and trying new restaurants, traveling, uh, going and watching concerts, maybe going and watching a sports match, something like that. That'll help remove the monotony from your life. And like I said, it's high reward. You'll be recharged, energized to come back to medical school and to do your thing there. And lastly, I'd say take up a role with responsibility. So whether that's a role in a society or whether that's taking up a job, having some sort of role where you have responsibility is really, really conducive to being a productive person who manages their time well. Now, you may be thinking that I don't have the time on my plate to do this or I don't really, you know, it, it, it'll be too stressful. I won't have enough time to get my other stuff done. But actually, you'll find when you take up such a role, it'll improve your productivity overall because that productivity that you have in your role or your job transfers to medical school. And then, although you have less time, you use that time better, right? So those were all my tips. And now I have a few take home messages for you. This is another very cliched one and that is that medicine is a marathon, it's not a sprint. You wanna take it slow and steady and you wanna be successful throughout, whether even if you're not completely smashing one exam or you're not completely smashing one assignment, that's fine. Get through medical school. It's more important to complete all the steps than to really, really smash one of the steps and like do amazing in it and then be burned out for everything else. So be consistent put in a good amount of effort consistently rather than putting in an incredible amount of effort at once and then just being exhausted. And alongside that effort, that hard work you're putting in, make sure to unwind, make sure to take care of your mental and physical health and use your free time well, do all of these things. And now my next thing that I want to say to you is everybody has days where they are not motivated and that's fine. Some days you can't rely on motivation. Some days you just have to rely on discipline to get you through. You don't want this again to be a everyday, all the time kind of thing, but some days that'll happen and it's okay not to feel motivated. Everybody does. But that is basically the video. That's everything I wanted to say and to share with you. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it interesting and I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, do drop a like down below on this video, smash that subscribe button, leave any comments you want down below and do share the video with your friends, family, peers, anybody who you think will find it useful. And with that, I will see you in the next one.